We're joined by Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie. Senator, good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. So from what you can tell, how do Australians, and in particular Tasmanians, fare in all of this? Oh, look, I think it's um, a little bit early, but uh, Tasmania, I think some of the budget announcements, we already knew they were coming anyway. Yeah. Um, when I get back home, I'm obviously going to hear a lot more yeah. about it then uh, once I get my boots on the ground. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting. We have been quite lucky. We've been, I think, because we have a Liberal government down there, yeah. they have thrown a fair bit at us over the last 12 months, and going yeah. into that last election, we fared well out of that double D, mate, so yeah. we're, still, uh, we're still doing okay down there. I am a bit concerned that with our borders still closed, how long they can last like that without having the tourism. Yeah. They're really suffering, the pubs and clubs down there. Our kids are still not back at um, UTAS yet on the grounds. Uh, they're yeah. really feeling the mental health situation down there, and obviously they're they're going to be paying more for their degrees. From what you've been able to tell so far, and we will get to degrees in just a second, but uh, do you think this will work? I mean, it's, it's very much a gamble here. Put to the Treasurer a little bit earlier, it's dependent on a vaccine, it's dependent on borders opening, staying open for that matter. Are you that confident? Um, look, if we don't have a vaccine and we're going to have second and third flare-ups um, around the country, I'm not that confident. I'll be honest with you, I've got a feeling that this budget or May's budget will look very, very different to this one. It is rather concerning. So I think yeah. we're going to see the real hit after Christmas in late March and then you're really going to see where we're at by the end of June next year. So a May budget, I think, would be a great idea just to see where we're at. 56% of all people who lost their jobs during the pandemic were women. 60% uh, of all those who return to work are women. Do you think there is enough in this budget from what you can tell so far that relates to women? No, I don't think there is enough given out there to women and we certainly could have started with the childcare sector. Uh, that would have certainly helped. Uh, no money's been thrown at that. They've been struggling for years. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's especially a lot of single mums out there already struggling. It would have been nice to give them a bit of a break on those uh, childcare uh, fees but certainly uh, not enough. I want to see what they're doing with super for women uh, for when they get older as well. Um, so I'll have a good look at that over time. Centre Alliance, uh, onto universities now and university reform. Centre Alliance has teamed up with the government so far. It looks like that should be able to get through now. Are you disappointed about that? Yeah, I'm really disappointed that, you know, when it comes to big reforms like that and it hits all our kids around the country, that they're all very concerned about is giving the South Australian University some money and get a little bit on the, on the sidelines. I can tell you now what I got offered and what what they're getting, the 50 million or 40 million they're getting for South Australia, they completely sold their souls and they got ripped off. If you're going to go in and you're going to do a vote and, and most people do not agree with you, by Christ, mate, they're going to sell your soul like that. You'd want to come out with hundreds of millions of dollars to back it up. Because I tell you, uh, they're going to struggle in the next election. Yeah, who's lo the government is? Yeah. No, well, Central Alliance is, mm. absolutely. OK. Uh, so who are the losers in all of that at the end of the day? Well, I think for me, I'm worried about um, aged care, even though uh, the aged care sector where we've got those um, home packages, there's still 100,000 that are not filled. Yeah. So putting out 29,000 um, extra ones, yeah, it's short. like they're, you know, yeah. not just a long way short, but it's actually um, implementing it. This is the problem with the, the coalition. All we've seen them do is talk the talk, but mate, they've got to start walking the walk and they've got to make sure that this transforms from not just talking about it, but actually making it happen so we can see it happen. And that's a problem in itself. I'm worried about, you know, they've got 100,000 extra um, apprenticeships out there. Well, mate, where's the money for our tapes? I mean, I can tell you now, I've got asbestos through our tapes, I've got equipment that's been used in the Cold War. How do, where's, that's the, miss, they're missing pieces of the puzzle. You can't have a hundred new thousand apprenticeships out there if you don't have these training places. We're going back to the um, fly-by-nighters where we're now paying our kids back because they got so ripped off by putting their mates in to run these, run these sectors. I mean, come on. You've got, if you're going to have apprenticeships out there, you've got to have these tapes up and booming. Hardly any money for do them, Do you mate. see any problem with this omnibus bill passing? Yeah, I do see a problem with the omnibus bill passing and what really bothers me more than anything is when you put everything in together and basically they put a noose around your neck and they say, you're either voting for anything, for everything or nothing gets through. And that is not the way to do politics, not in the 21st century. Is that how you feel? Noose around the neck? Yeah, that's how I feel. And I imagine that Albo's feeling that this morning too. I can't speak for Albo, but you know, when you chuck everything in an omnibus, you've got to go, you know... Why are you putting the bad bits with the good bits? Let's discuss it. And they're not even open for discussion. So ramming that sort of stuff through, I just find that really, really difficult. It comes down to communication. It comes down to making sure that, um, like I said, politics in the 21st century, both those leaders should agree on stuff, not ramming things down our throats. Okay. And that's really disappointing that the Liberal Party is still playing that way. Don't shirt front us.
don't shirt front us because there's no need for it. Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lamb, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having me on.